my name is Christy Coker. I'm director here at Archway Gallery. Those of you who haven't been here before, let me just let you know that this is an artist-owned gallery. We've been in business since 1976. And um, all of the artists in our gallery are local. So um, as you walk around, if you haven't already met some of the artists and had a, a few words with them, notice the ones who have name tags. Feel free to ask any of them questions about any of the artwork you see. We'll be happy to help you. Um, now, every month we have a featured artist. One of our members is um, featured. And this month, of course, Sherry Hill is our featured artist. Um, just a little bit about Sherry. She is um, an integral part of our Archway team. She is in charge of our website, one of the artists in charge of our website. So uh, things that you see online come from Sherry. Don't blame it. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does a great job. Uh, and. Um, Anyway, she, she's a, a wonderful artist, and I have enjoyed getting to know her on a personal level as well. Her artwork for this show is just mesmerizing. I, uh, I feel that it's, uh, it just sort of, it captures that whole feeling of movement and space, and uh, the colors just sort of speak to you. Um, and these, these pieces here are just absolutely fabulous as well. Um, and I just appreciated her work even more once I heard her speak about her inspiration for this series of works. And so now I hope that you will also um, feel the inspiration as she speaks with you about it. Thank you. Here's Sherry. That was kind of embarrassing, <laughs> and I, I don't. And thank you, thank you for all of your kind words. Um, artists talk. I was thinking more that you guys could just ask me questions, and I can answer them. I do have a, a statement, artist statement for the show. It's in that pile over there that um, probably describes better in detail what I was thinking when I put together this show. But just in general, um, I am an architect um, by training and a practicing architect, so a lot of what I see on a daily basis and a lot of what I think about is space. Um, and I am also really um, interested in the science of space exploration. I'm not a scientist, but I love reading about space and following what um, we are doing when we send a, you know, the, the ships out, the exploratory ships and stuff. So this series is, um, when I started doing the series, I was also reading some science fiction books that um, really inspired me. Um, mainly the books by Ursula K. Le Guin, who, who is um, not your traditional science fiction writer. Her parents are both, were both anthropologists, so her stories are written from an uh, anthropological and social point of view, not so much some hard science. So while I was doing, uh, reading her, when I rediscovered her this past year, I started read, reading every book that she has written, if I could get my hands on them, I read them. So as I was painting these, I was thinking of her stories and her descriptions of space and all that stuff. So that combined with me being an architect, um, you know, I just wanted to, to sort of um, explore space both the physical aspect of it, but also the temporal of it. Um, as I was explaining to some of you before, um, some of these paintings have previous lives before what you're seeing. I don't ever throw away my canvases or my old paintings if I don't like something. Um, instead of whiting it all out or throwing away, I just keep building <coughs> paint and layers on top of it. Sometimes there's an intention, sometimes not. 
sometimes what I put down, the paintings will um, inspire me to move to the next step. So a lot of these paintings have different layers on it, and that's intentional. I wanted the viewers to experience the process, the time, the, the tempore experience that I myself experienced painting these. Um, so you can kind of see the layers underneath. Uh, I am the kind of artist that I guess I like a lot of things. I, it, I have a hard time staying with one technique or one type of painting. So um, some people have commented to me um, that, you know, like these works are very different from what you've done before. And so yeah, but you know, I like to do a little bit of everything. Um, and so my art keeps evolving, but I don't see them as changing from, you know, changing 180 degrees. So to, to me, they're more like a steady progression of experiments. Um, what I was getting at was I also like drawing a lot. Um, so I didn't want to just do painting. I wanted to do drawing too. So I was trying to do to see if I can bring some drawing into the painting. And so that's when I started experimenting with lines on top of layers. Um, these. <laughs> um, I have to um, be honest with you guys. guys. I was under pressure to paint all these paintings and I had this wall to fill. <laughs> so I was running out of time. And so I thought, okay, I'm calling the show Woven Spaces, might as well weave something. <laughs> so these are woven, woven out of pipe cleaners. Um, <laughs> I want to thank two, a few people for this, actually. They're Judith over there and Edie who just walked in. We used to collaborate on making um, stuff, decorations for our church fundraising. So we used to take chicken wires, that was mostly Judith and Edie, and we would stuff, bend them and stuff them inside and put ribbons through them. We'd just see what we could do with just plain old, simple, low chicken wires. Um, so that was kind of an inspiration. With the pipe cleaners, where's Laura? Laura McAlites. She left she, in her office. She has this beautiful wall art made out of red um, pipe cleaners, and she just wove them and hung them up. And I thought, wow, that's art. And she's not even an artist; she's an interior designer. You know, I thought that's a great. And that's just a great way to use a material that you never, it's hardly ever in your realm of thought as an artist, as a material to use. So I've had lots of fun doing this. And it also provided me with a break from just painting. So. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> um, did you, first of all, did you guys all meet Tally too? If you didn't have a chance to hear her play, she has CDs that she's selling, and she is a phenomenal pianist. Beautiful work. Thank you. Anyway, questions? Alice. Oh, I was just curious. I noticed several of your pictures had the silver thread uh, kind of motif, I'll call it. Was there any kind of special uh, uh, inspiration for that? You know what I'm talking about? The, I particularly like it. almost luminescent silver thread. They're just white gel pens. Um, when I started doing these triptychs, uh, I was actually working on a theme that's memories and dreams and memories. And if you have read Harry Potter, do you remember the pensive? The little pensive, the little thing that you can look into and do you remember that? I have okay, well in the movie, yeah, so you know what I'm talking about, that little thread, that's kind of the memory, so that's, <laughs> more friends are coming in, great, um, so that's the, the um, what I was thinking was threads of memories, um, 
That's where it came from. Okay. Yeah. Um, what was the name of the sci-fi author? And then Ursula K. Le Guin. L G U I N. I pronounce it Le Guin. Le Guin. Okay. Yeah. And and what are the other sci-fi authors? That I are she's like the pra practically the only sci-fi author I like. I mean, you know, I, mean, I think that's how I think it's very boring. But um, my husband and my sons are huge sci-fi fiction, so I listen to them and I like sci-fi movies. But actually, I am a mystery fan. I've read um, mystery books. But hers is the, her stories of first sci science fiction books that grabbed me because they weren't um, about shoot up and, you know, just technical thing. They're more about um, humans and, and the place of humans in the universe. When you walk up to these hanging pieces, it's really fascinating that the closer you get, the more of the layers are revealed in the interior fabric. And the, the layers have a very similar feeling to your paintings. So I don't know if that was intended or not, but it's really it, magical. It was. Um, when I started doing this, I was, again, thinking of space. And I was thinking that of, um, you know, how we define space. And I was thinking of inside this space. And outside the space. It's all space. And um, it's really funny because a neighbor was here and she said, because I, when I was working on these, I had hung them off the little control on the, my AC grow upstairs. So in the, not against the window. So at night when my light is on, if you're walking on the street past my house, you can see these. And I've wondered if, you know, like, what would the neighbors think? Well, I found out today. <laughs> They're like going, what are those? Are they lampshades? <laughs> or a body snatcher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny how different people read it. That my sister, who is a doctor, she looked at it and she said, it looks like an organ. Uh, they could be body organs, you know. and. Um, <laughs> My kids have said they could be like body snatch or some kind of science fiction thing. And when I hung them up and strung them up, I thought they could be seeds, or like beans, you know, green bean things. So. They look like what? They look like cocoons. Cocoons, that's what they're called. That's what I meant for them to be. Yeah. So, as an architect, when you're designing a building, you imagine using the building while you're designing. Can you imagine people in these spaces? Because these are almost like telling stories. Mm -hmm. While you're painting, is that... Yes. Are you um, creating a story in your mind? Yes. Well, you know, not a narrative, but it's more like how I feel and the um, tone, yeah. Um, I got back to, you know, I started doing art when I was a kid, and I stopped. When, um, when we started coming in, full-time job and all that stuff. When I picked up art again in 2008, I started back in watercolor. And I learned um, watercolor techniques, real, realism, from a couple of teachers that are just great. So I did totally super realistic watercolors. Um, and I was not so certain about abstracts, and but I started looking at abstract work from different artists, and I was just trying to understand why some people would do abstracts, and how do you look up abstract work? What is a you know good abstract and what's not? So the more I looked into that, I the more I liked it. Um, but I always knew that I didn't want to be the kind of abstract artist that just splashes paint on the canvas. I would kind of, I would like to carry that realist, realism narrative kind of into the paintings, the abstracts. So, thank you. so I want my abstracts to mean something, to tell a story.
It's my son, by the way. And I want to thank my husband and my sons. My other son is in park today, uh, right now, but they have been so patient with me, especially my husband. Is this stupid? You know, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> is this done? Well, it doesn't look not done. <laughs> so, and I want to thank the Archway artists for all the support they've given me to put on this. It's been a wonderful journey. And thank you all for coming. And I hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs>